In this video, we are looking at the conspiracy theory that Shakespeare did not actually write his own plays. Let's go. G'day, Pockets, Small Cram Productions here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're looking at five different people who were alleged to be the real authors of Shakespeare's plays. There has been for some time a conspiracy theory that basically says that Shakespeare could not have written the work that he wrote because he was not travelled enough, he was not educated enough, he was not connected enough to be in court and understand the happenings of some of the things that he wrote about, the clarity with which he writes court events, the understanding he has of international locations, as well as some speculation that arises from the fact that in his will, he never actually left his body of work to anyone and left no instructions for what should happen to it. So the theory says that these people either co-wrote the plays with him or wrote them in their entirety, and that because of a need to not have their name attached to works of theatre, they actually gave Shakespeare the title to the plays and that he was named the author so that they could protect their own identity. There is even some conspiracy theories that go so far as to say that Shakespeare did not actually even exist. So the information that I have drawn for this video comes from a few different websites. Uh, I started digging into it and found, as always, that someone's already done all the work. So I will put the links to all of the uh, websites that I've basically uh, curated this information from in the description below so that if you want to check it out in more detail yourself, you are able to do that. Uh, so just want to pay tribute to those people that have done this work and uh, that this is a curated piece of information, not my own research. And of course, I have my trusty clipboard with all of my notes. So let's get into it. The first person that's attributed to this theory is probably the most famous, and that is Sir Francis Bacon. And the reasons that people believe that Bacon may have been the true author of the plays is that uh, there are a lot of small and large similarities in Bacon's published works and Shakespeare's plays. Bacon was well educated, he was the head of a literary society, and he traveled often. And these are all subjects that are covered in Shakespeare's plays. Bacon also knew the science of ciphers and experts actually believe that they have decoded clues in the plays and elsewhere that point to Bacon as the real author. And I did read on one of the websites that I was looking at that they actually think that Bacon has left his life story coded through the entire canon of Shakespeare's work. Uh, the second person is Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. And this is actually where the Oxfordian theory comes from. Uh, believed to be connected to him. So the reasons listed for Oxford being the potential author are that Oxford was known by others for his poetry. The 17th Earl of Oxford traveled often. He ran into pirates, which is something that appears in Shakespeare's plays. All of the royals that were invited to the plays were actually good friends of the Earl of Oxford's. Now the one sticking point in this particular theory is that the Earl of Oxford actually died before all of Shakespeare's plays were written. But the justification for that is that the plays were clearly misdated. The third person believed to be the writer of Shakespeare's work was actually Christopher Marlowe. Now again, Marlowe died before all of Shakespeare's works were written, so it's an unlikely scenario. But the reasons listed for Marlowe to be the potential author are that the style and frequency of specific words and phrases are mirrored in both Shakespeare and Marlowe's work. Marlowe died in a bar fight, but believers say that there are a lot of sketchy records around it and they think that he actually faked his death so that he could continue to write in secret in private. The Marlowe theory is not as widely popular as some of the others and in my opinion, yeah, no. <laughs> but that's just, but that's just me. The fourth person is actually not well known, but is an Italian who was living in England and had a large impact on the English language at the time. John Florio was an Italian who was the first to translate works such as Montaigne and Boccaccio, and he wrote the first English and Italian dictionary. He rose to the role of groom of the privy chamber during the reign of James I, and he read stories in Italian to Queen Anne, and he worked in the court, which led him to meet Ben Jonson, because the two of them had to work together on court productions. Florio is known to Saviolo, who was the sword master, who has some of his phrases captured in some of Shakespeare's works. So Florio and Saviolo knew each other, Saviolo was brought to England and knew Ben Jonson. Some of Florio's poetry has been analysed and is believed to be very similar to Shakespeare's. 
And given that the majority of Shakespeare's comedies and tragedies were actually set in Italy, this just reinforces this theory for some people. There is one more person who has an even stronger potential claim to being the true author. And that fifth person is a woman, an Italian woman by the name of Amelia Bassano Lanya. And there are a number of reasons why she is believed to have been the author. She became the first female poet published in England with a radical treatise advocating for women. She knew Queen Elizabeth I. She was the daughter of a court musician and she played the lute, the harpsichord and the virginals, giving her the ability to integrate the 300 musical terms and nearly 2,000 musical allusions found in the scripts. She was fluent in several languages, including Ladino, Latin, Italian, Veneto, and possibly Greek. She became the mistress of the Lord Chamberlain for many years. She's actually thought to be the dark lady that Shakespeare wrote about in the sonnets. Did he write about her or was she writing about herself? She was part of an extensive Jewish lineage that dated back into the 1300s of Morocco. In English court depositions, two of Amelia's cousins are referred to as black men. So people of color in the English court, which is actually, we know that to be the case. We know that to have happened. There's, there's painting evidence that proves that as well. And the final one is that Amelia was a relatively uncommon name in Elizabethan England but was the name, or a slight variation of it, given to six different characters in the plays, more than any other female name. No other Elizabethan playwright used it. Two other characters were named Bassinius and Bassanio, variations of Bassano, her name. So the belief is that there's no hard evidence to support that Shakespeare actually wrote the plays. There is more circumstantial evidence that she wrote many of the works that Shakespeare is attributed to. So did Shakespeare write his own plays? We'll probably never really know because there is so much contrasting evidence around all of this. To counter all of these arguments, the realities that we do know is that playwrights of that period borrowed from each other quite extensively. So the fact that there is correlations between Marlowe's work and Shakespeare's work is not really surprising to me. In fact, if you look at Marlowe's work and where he ended, and then you look at the continued development of iambic pentameter in Shakespeare's work, to me, it feels like he has taken something and actually grown it. Despite Shakespeare not being born into money and being born into the aristocracy, the fact that he left his home in Stratford-upon-Avon and worked extensively in England. We all know what kind of access fame gets you. If he managed to make a name for himself as a playwright and then managed to make a name for himself as an actor, that would have given him access into some of these places to see and understand the happenings at court and the dealings with people, hear stories and take those and write about them. It is possible that through those connections he may have met Bassano that she may be the dark lady and that he wrote about her because she was actually his true love. The fact that he left his wife nothing but their second best bed in his will would indicate to me that he actually had somebody else that he was more connected to and that his wife at home was there because he got her pregnant and had to marry her. It's not like we haven't seen that before either. The fact that he didn't leave his collected works to anyone, much like the old studio contracts of Hollywood, it may have been that his works were just handed to the company of the King's Men because they were who he wrote for. And it was just assumed that they now owned the collected works. I'm not saying that all of this is accurate. There is some speculation, but we can't rule out the fact that Shakespeare could have just been one of those one in a million people that is in the right place at the right time, gets the right connections, that helps him get the leg up and a foot in the door to the places that help him continue to develop his work. So did Shakespeare write his own work? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'd be interested to hear it. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like if you got anything out of it. Subscribe to the channel and of course, I'll see you on the next video.